Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. I've just come out of four hours of French conversation class and my mind is a bit muddled. So bear with me as I talk about some of the life lessons I learned out of this brilliant debut novel by John Fowles called The Collector. Now this book was published in 1963. This particular one was published in 2006, I believe. And I got it out of the University of Third Age Book Exchange bookshelf. I automatically got it simply because of the publishing house, which is vintage. This red back pretty much tells me anything with a red spine is going to be good. I got this novel and I read it soon after, which is really strange because usually it takes months before I read books that I get but this intrigued me to the point that I now think that it is one of the best books I've read in 2023 and indeed it is now one of my top 10 books that I've read ever which is really bizarre because it's a debut novel now John Fowles had written The French Lieutenant's Woman which I think was a movie he'd also written The Magus I've never read any of his books if his other books are like this one I'm gonna have to try and seek them out let me know in the comments below if you've read this book do you know what it's about what were your thoughts because there is a whole atmosphere in this book that is actually quite creepy it's oppressive it's very somber it is scary scary not in a violent way there's no violence in here but there are lots of themes here about obsession love obsession about power control identity personal transformation it's about a lot of themes that we all understand and yet and yet the storyline is I'm going to say not bizarre it's not bizarre in a sense that we have seen many movies about weirdos who abduct young women because this is what it's about it is a story it is a creepy creepy story about a man by the name of Frederick Clegg now he's a sensitive well sensitive is not sensitive really and that's kind of sense of the word in any other storyline he would be a serial killer but he's not a serial killer in this book he's an abductor he's someone who is a loner grows up with his aunts he comes across some money he wins a lottery of all things of all the people to win money it's him but he has this chip on his shoulder with regards to the fact that he comes from a poor background and he has never had any friends he's never been rich so he's not part of this set of people that he thinks he should be that they look down on him simply because of his background he wins a bit of money and so he uses that money to buy a house and set up a basement which is like a jail cell so that he could abduct a young beautiful young woman who he has been pretty much following around stalking and abducts her at the back of a van to take her into this room where he keeps her now he's a butterfly collector and he loves collecting all these butterflies and he knows the ins and outs of all these butterflies and in his head he's concocted some perfect story of her being his beautiful butterfly a butterfly that he could open up or go downstairs and actually watch and appreciate her beauty for time immemorial but he doesn't count on the fact that she is someone who is feisty she questions him she argues she fights all the time and he doesn't get it he's kind of like he's freaked out because his thoughts of how he thought it would be like is not akin to what he's experiencing and it throws him out now the first part of the book is written in his voice and as you read Frederick Clegg's voice you start to dare I say it feel sorry for him and I have to kind of I have to say so, hang on hang on Helen he's just abducted someone how can you how can you feel sorry for this character you start to feel sorry the fact that you know this is his background this is how he grew up and he's unfortunately a victim of his own the way he grew up and yet he abducts persons so now the second part of the novel is where Miranda is captive journals her personal transformation while she's down there held captive gagged and tied up she goes through a personal transformation where she starts to think about all the people in her life 
her boyfriend uh, who is 21 years older than her how she has dealt with him and how he has dealt with her so she goes through all these things and she writes them down and has this unfolding this transformation where she starts to appreciate life and indeed we read someone who wants to survive. The whole book is quite oppressive to read. It is a claustrophobic read where you feel for Miranda with her locked up downstairs and she's given everything that she wants and everything that she needs by Frederick because money is no object. He'll spend anything on her and she's doing her best to try and get out of the situation. She tries to escape, but she can't. She tries to wangle the arguments and the discussions to try and get him to see her point of view, but she can't. She offers and shows him books about art and asks him questions about what he's feeling about the artworks, and yet he can't express himself. And she starts to think, that he is someone who is dead inside. And so as we start to read the book, initially we thought Miranda was pretty petty, a rich girl, but over time you start to realize that she is truly an artist who appreciates life and starts to understand her way of the world and, and starts to want to live. She wants to live and her living is through her art and her living is also through getting to understand types of people in the world and the types of people in the world as the new people, the new people who are nouveau rich, who pretend that they are artists but are not the people who want to be seen, the people who want to show off. And there are others who do struggle for their art, like herself, who see something a little bit more deeper in life and in humanity and someone who appreciates art and humanity and somehow she is trying to get Clegg, Frederick Clegg to see this and she cannot do it. The themes in this book are topics that are really deep. They made me think long and hard. If a book, when you put down a book and you start to mull it over and you can't wait to pick it up and actually when you do pick it up, you go straight and it immerses you into that situation. It's as if you're in the basement there and you feel for Miranda because you yourself, I'm sure people out there appreciate humanity, appreciate that as humans, we're not perfect. We, we love art. We don't understand it. And yet there is something expressive in it. And that's what makes us alive. And yet there are people who don't understand it, who people who pretend to go through life, who, who may be successful and yet they are dead inside and that we can't sway them in any way. The only thing we can do is kind of accept them for what who they are and let them believe what they believe. But what we do then is we live ourselves, we survive. And so that's how I felt when reading this book. It was as I was reading it and, and reading the story about her boyfriend, PJ, who was 21 years her senior and the way he was such a patronizing figure for the way he spoke to her, the way he put her down, the way he put her artwork down, I started to think that here she was, someone who is an artist who appreciates art. She's in the basement of some stalker kind of guy who wants to give her everything, who is completely in love with her and obsessed by her and listens to her, but not to the point of doing what she wants. And then here was her boyfriend in the outside world who was like a jailer. He pretended to be an artist or he always put her down. And yet two people, very similar situations and two different situations. And I, at times when I was reading about her boyfriend, I found him more abhorrent than actually Frederick Clegg who had her locked up inside. So go figure. The themes, like I mentioned, are all about power, identity, control, obsessive love. And the more I read about it, the more I kept thinking about it. It's also about classes because of the different class that Clegg came from being lower class and Miranda being 
uh, upper class and there's the the distinction there and the fact that never the twain shall meet you'll always be part of one class or another kind of reminds me of what the great Gatsby had similar themes but ultimately this this story made me sit and think about that I am a Miranda character I'm someone who loves art who appreciates uh, humanity who doesn't who always asks questions who always wants to try and understand herself and her place in the world who reads books like this that makes her think who appreciates art who appreciates the struggle that creativity brings also appreciates that there are people out there who aren't like her who aren't as understanding to the creative process who take hacks who who pretend to know and who pretend to be experts to me as i was reading this as she was trying to get Clegg to see sense in this and she called him Caliban. Caliban was the name of this half man half monster in a Shakespearean play The Tempest which I haven't read in the last few days since reading this book Caliban keeps popping up in different aspects in other books that I have read in fact I am reading <laughs> I am reading Henry Lawson who is uh, who was one of Australia's poets, most well-known famous poet and writers in Australia. And indeed, as I was reading this book today, the term Caliban came up again. And I do wonder about the little synchronicity of words that keeps popping up in my life when I read books. What I'm trying to say here is that this whole book basically showed to me that you've got Miranda, someone who understands life, who understands humanity, who wants to survive, trying every permutation and combination to try and get Clegg to understand, to see sense, to make him change him, his mind. But you know what? He doesn't. Who's the dead person there? The dead one is Clegg. He's dead in here. He's dead in here simply because he's got a one-track mind. He doesn't sway from his own world his own perception everything is in his head everything he believes is the right way in his head and he doesn't he doesn't understand so what makes someone human is the people like Miranda who take it for what it is and could try and see the beauty and the changeability in the situation versus an idiot like Clegg I shouldn't call him an idiot he's just someone who is an utterly sad person he's someone you just don't want to know is someone you just don't want to know is someone you just don't want to have in your life because of the fact that he's simply dead inside i don't know that's all i could that's the only way i could explain this it's such a it is such an intensely interesting book I would highly recommend this book. I'm not doing it justice. As I was reading this book, my husband also mentioned to me that it was a book that he did in year 11 as part of a high school text. And I wouldn't be surprised now reading this book has been so popular. So let me know what you think about The Collector. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>